This video is going to be a look at Devin DuVernay and the contributions he's made so far in 2022. I've kind of already covered that. This is actually, to be honest with you, a look back at some of the things he did in 2021 to a lesser extent in 2020 and kind of pose the question, what did we miss? You know, did we knew that there was athletic ability there, 100 plus catches in his final year at Texas, 107, I believe. We knew there was speed, you know, 439, 438 or something like that, timed laser. Um, but I didn't know that we had a guy who could win on third downs like this. Third downs, third and five, third and six, where Lamar is looking for a matchup that's in our favor. Think about who we see on third downs, what coverages we see. Well, sometimes, yeah, we'll see blitz zero, but I'm generally talking about like man free. Bill, Bel Bill Belichick's a big man free guy on third down. A lot of our big plays in 2022 so far offensively have come against man free. I think there's going to be a time, and it might be this weekend against the Bills, especially with their with two of their starting four DBs being out, I believe, where teams are going to sit back in more split field zone type coverages or at least matchup coverages. But think about this, Devin DuVernay right now, if it's third and five, third and six, is he going to get the number one cover corner? No, he's not. That's going to be on Bateman or Andrews. Is he going to get the number two cover guy? Well, no. However, if he keeps making plays like he's made through three weeks in the pass game on third downs, defensive coordinators in the NFL are going to adjust and say, hey, this guy is beating these people for touchdowns. Look at the Jets game. The difference in those two, those two plays is huge. The Jets nearly scored. You know, late as it was, we won 24 to 9. Let's say we don't get those two third down touchdown passes to Juvenet. We have to settle for field goals. That's minus eight points. That's 16 9, right? If I did my math right. The impact that he's having, not just the kick return, not just the punt return, you know, last week against New England, the third down catches to me is something I'm going to continue to mention and harp on. And when I, as I go back and look at the 2021 film, and I'm going to show some of it to you here tonight, I, I'm like, what did I miss? Because he's making third down catches. There were situations last year where they trusted him, specifically Denver. Rashad Bateman was not healthy yet. He wasn't playing. Sammy Watkins played. Marquise Brown played because he made that big touchdown catch in the end zone. But there were two situations on third down where Lamar went to Devin DuVernay. There were situations last year where he made three incredibly difficult catches, and I'm, I'm, there's a handful of them I'm not showing you, two from the Bears game, where Devin DuVernay makes difficult catches late in the game, illustrating that he might have the clutch gene. Some people have it, some people don't. We're going to start off with 2022 film. Uh, some of this I have already showed you, but I'm going to use this to kind of segue into some stuff from 2021. Um, ask, calling myself into question because, look, I was not one of those people bloviating about the receiver position for the last six months. I was not one of them. And if you were, that's okay. I mean, none of us knew that DuVernay was going to be able to do this on third down. Now, he's got a favorable matchup. Up here, I think you've got DJ Reed on Bateman. Gardner is down here on Likely. Him and Michael Carter the second switch, so Carter is on Andrews. So we've got a favorable matchup, Hall versus DuVernay. A lot of us prior to that Jets game identified Hall as a guy that we would want to attack. Clearly Lamar, Lamar did too in the offensive staff because that's right where he went. Huge third down play. Not, we didn't have to settle for a field goal. We got a touchdown. Incredible throw by Lamar. I'm going to talk about this route because we've I've got DuVernay running it three times this year, being targeted twice. So I called it the Marquise Brown route. So you've got the what could be an over route by Andrews. And you know from watching my breakdown hopefully a couple of weeks ago that this safety ends up checking up on Andrews when Andrews pulls this route up kind of in between the hashes. That line's not totally accurate. And DuVernay's route's going to stem him outside and then a later developing post and that he runs onto the area that's vacated or could have been covered theoretically by the safety, but that safety, again, recognizes the danger of Mark Andrews, recognizes the tendency that we have to throw the ball to Mark Andrews, so he decides to break into that route that Andrews consistently threatens, and DuVernay takes this and catches it around about the E or the T in Jets. Beautiful concept, and uh, something that we can repeat by using the gravity of Andrews, DuVernay not making a contested catch there like he was on his first touchdown against the Jets, wide open. Big moment, two third down catches week one. At that point in time, we're like, okay, great, we got a guy who made two third down catches, but we weren't really talking about the fact that it was third down. Since that time, however, we've had this play happen. This past Sunday against New England, DuVernay's up here up top, again, running the same route. 
Now, it's not the same concept because last time it was mesh. You had a mesh. You had Andrew sitting here. The, uh, you're getting the opposite view here, by the way. You're getting a mirror image because the play went the other direction. Then Duve ran that later developing post into the end zone against the Jets. He's running the same route. Everybody else is not. We're running essentially flood concept, I would say, but it's kind of like levels as well. So you're getting underneath by likely, over by Andrews, and then out. That's a poor drawing line, sorry. Outside release or, or outside step, and then at this angle, kind of like a post. But I would call that flood, even though it doesn't reach the other side of the field. Level, it has a levels, you know, element to it too. And Duvernay beats that corner badly. Look how badly he gets him turned around. And he's already created the space. Lamar already knows where he's going the foot with the football. Once he recognizes that, you know, Andrews appears to be well covered, even though he can make these tough catches, because Duve is wide open. Easy. 21 yard gain. Third and six. I believe that was on our sixth possession. Huge play. We go down and score there. Then on the next possession, we get a sack of Mac Jones by Matabike. And we get the huge punt return by who else? Devin Duvernay. And we go down and score on that possession. To, and that was that was Duvernay's touchdown, which I'll show you here in a minute. So he's made these plays before. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say what were we, why are we surprised? It's 2021. He's going to be wide open. We're going to run the scissors concept with him and Andrews. You can see that there's communication going on between the safety, the nickel, and a corner over here. The corner doesn't appear to be paying attention. And the safety gets pissed off, and they clap to make sure that the call is there. Simultaneous to that, Marquise Brown is apparently putting his mouthpiece in during the play, which is weird. But a great catch by Duvernay, a great job by Lamar recognizing it. And, oh, by the way, it's third down. Some of these plays, you know, I knew he had made these plays, but my brain didn't recall that it was on third down. That's, that's clutch. I mean, he is wide open. Yes, he's got to get two feet down. He's got to catch the ball. But this catch, to me, looks very similar to the one against Hall versus the Jets in Week 1, and also the high-point catch that he just made against New England in the corner of the end zone on that slot fade. Very similar. And the only difference is there's nobody covering him. There's nobody on him. But he's made those catches, too. Who do we have that makes contested catches? Mark Andrews, all right. Rashad Bateman, okay. Duvernay down the bottom here. Huge comeback against Minnesota at home. Last game, last football game that we won in 2021, obviously. Great ball placement by Lamar and Trust. Now, this is not third down. It's second down. And the, and the video you know, quality is a little fuzzy, but Lamar's got to deal with this linebacker, so he can't throw it through this window, you know, through the left shoulder of that linebacker for a lot of reasons. One of which is you have a safety over here that could converge from this side. So Lamar throws it on the back shoulder of that linebacker, and Duvernay adjusts and makes the catch. It looks pretty clutch to me. Looking back at some of these plays in retrospect, he made, the, he made these plays last year. Were he to have more opportunities last year, could he have given us a little bit more production? I say the answer is yes. Am I saying we shouldn't have targeted Andrews so much? We shouldn't have targeted Marquise Brown so much? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not denigrating those guys at all. I'm just saying there is film evidence here from 2021 that Devin DuVernay is capable of making these tough catches. He just didn't get the number of opportunities. Now he is, and he's taking advantage of them. Is he going to end up with 75 catches? Probably not. Could he end up with 8 or 10 touchdowns? Absolutely. Guy makes tough catches. Now, that was not the... Um, the notion or that was not the reputation that he had prior to the last three games in 2022. But we we can now go back and look at this film, and that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm forcing you to do here if you're watching the video. He made tough catches then. Lamar is intentionally throwing this ball low. This is there are so many people who don't understand, you know, coverages and they don't understand, you know, trying to protect your players. This ball is intentionally thrown low down into ground to protect Duvernay. Because if the ball's thrown up high and Duvernay's shoulder and head are up here. He's getting decked right now. So this is a great throw by Lamar. This is great ball placement. This is not accidental. This is Lamar looking where Duvernay's going and saying, okay, I understand where those guys are going to be. I understand I've got to protect you. You're my boy. 
And receivers, tight ends, and running backs appreciate that. They go back to the huddle and they dap the guy up because they're like, hey, thank you for protecting me. Okay, a little bit more 2021 film, then we'll get to the uh, touchdown against the Patriots. Week four, Denver, third and seven. Patrick Sertain, first-round pick, rookie first-round pick at that time. Duvernay schools him. And it wasn't the only time. Duvernay beat him three times. Sammy Watkins beat him as well. Not saying that Patrick Sertain sucks. That's not how I look at football. That's not how I evaluate football. Hopefully, you know, if it is, then tell me. But I don't think it is. Winning a one-on-one battle as the backside receiver, the X, in trips or bunch. Marquise Brown, Prochet, and Andrews are up there. He's down here all by himself. Yeah, the Broncos are bringing heavy pressure. Lamar goes to Devin DuVernay. Interesting to me. Looking, Looking back on it now at some of these plays. Tell me if it's interesting to you. I'm, I'm not second guessing our coaches last year. I'm not second guessing Lamar. I'm just saying it might not have. It might not be that he's developing. It might have just been opportunity. Going in motion, same game, second down and long. I think. Wheel sit. He's got the speed to threaten on the wheel, right? When we bring him in motion, and nobody steps out and goes with him, like you know, an outside linebacker or the Bills. And the Bengals will sometimes run an inside linebacker out, which is interesting. He's running a wheel. He can threaten down, vertically down the field from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline. And then he pulls this back. So we call it wheel sit. So he's running the wheel, turning on the jets, and then sitting. So he threatened that safety just enough to get that safety to veer back towards the end zone. And now there's a lot of separation, which there was already because nobody went with him when he went in motion. I don't notice many drops from Devin DuVernay, do you? Are you aware of any from previous seasons? I'm not. I'm not at all. I don't think he's going to get 80 targets this year. So I'm certainly not saying he should have gotten 80 last year. But he looks like a guy who we can trust in big situations, just like this one. This is third and 26. I don't know if you can't see the yard marker down there. You can't, and you certainly can't see it on the top side of the screen because of the sun. That's DuVernay. This is a designed screen downfield. It's a beautiful play. I've broken this down many times. Uh, if, you've, if you've seen me break it down, forgive me. But first of all, let's talk about something. Le'Veon Bell looks like he's being lazy up there, right? Nope. This is the design of the play. It's third and 26. We're intentionally throwing the underneath route. And then as DuVernay catches it, Le'Veon Bell is going to run for a point to block. And Devin DuVernay's job is to catch the ball and then immediately run to the sideline, get out of that block. It's essentially a seal block, and he almost picks up the first down. This is a design play. This is not accidental whatsoever. There's the block by Le'Veon Bell, and you can see the sideline. Devin DuVernay is almost able to get the first down. Check it out again. Design play that we run for Duv. We didn't run this for Marquise Brown. We didn't run this for, well, you know, Sammy, I mean, um, Rashad Bateman wasn't playing in that game. He has the speed, the ball skills, explosiveness to be used as a weapon, not just as a receiver. Obviously, he's an all-pro returner. There's the catch on the hash, and watch where he goes. The, the, the first down to make is that way, right? This is a design play that we installed for Devin Duvernay. He runs this way intentionally because Bell's going to come out of nowhere, block the corner. By the way, they, they did initially call a penalty, which is BS. They picked it up because it was a totally legal block executed with his inside shoulder, keeping his helmet out of the way by Le'Veon Bell. Duve gets around the edge. Were it not for that tackle right there, we got a first down. We actually did kick a field goal on the next play. Okay, finally to the touchdown from this week, third down. Third and four. Third and goal from the four. We're going to run this slot fade. I love the concept. Because it's giving two guys an opportunity to make a play by using Andrew's gravity. So Andrew's is in here. And what I think we're, regardless of whether the safety is here or here, regardless of where he is, Andrew's running this little slant type route is going to draw someone. So then we're running Z under by like, to likely. And then we're running the slot fade to do. So to me, this is using Andrew's gravity to create favorable leverage and matchups for two people. Likely, who's a big body running an in-breaking route, and then Duve, who has demonstrated the ability to 
not necessarily win jump balls, but to high point the football with contact and make the catch cleanly. Just like that Detroit catch last year in week three, just like the catch against the Jets, his first touchdown. This is a great design. I haven't seen this play. This is a, quote, new play for me, seeing the Ravens execute it down um, near the goal line. And this is, a, in my opinion, this shows you what they think of Devin DuVernay. Because, I, in my opinion, Mark Andrews is not part of the progression here. This is a two-receiver route between Likely and Devin DuVernay. And I think we're only doing that because, A, the talent level and the, uh, the plays that Likely has made in practice and in training camp and the plays that Devin DuVernay has made during the regular season already. End zone angle, if you want to, pay attention to two things. Um, Linderbaum does a great job on this blitzing inside linebacker, Bentley, number eight. And then just check out Lamar's helmet. Lamar does right now appear to be looking at Andrews or looking in this window, trying to determine if, if this free safety is you know, going to do anything in terms of you know, sitting, which he does. And that free safety is looking right at Andrews, so it takes that away from Lamar. So I might be wrong. It might not be a two- receiver read I just don't see any situation where a team doesn't assign someone in the middle of the field or a half field safety to deal with Andrews we're going to continue to get these one-on-ones to DuVernay um, on these third downs on these big situations and I just wonder how many of them he's going to win it looks like he's going to win 60 or 70 percent of them I'm sure that at some point some people will switch their coverage and put a better guy on him when they want to play man free but eventually you run out of options. Who has three great corners, right? Who has two great corners? Anyway, we're talking about Devin DuVernay. Who has speed like this? Not many people. He's made plays for this team, for this for this franchise, uh, for multiple years. This is 2020. You can see there's no, no fans in the stands. Week three against the Chiefs, you know, another game that we lost. DuVernay's a playmaker, and he's here. He's arrived. I don't think we're going to see the version of Devin DuVernay that only makes special teams plays and doesn't make any plays on offense. I don't think we're going to see that guy again. He is a playmaker. He's arrived, and he's a big part of what's happening right now offensively. I know we've scored a lot of points. Multiple guys have made plays. In my opinion, Duve keeps getting opportunities. He's going to continue to take advantage of them. I'm glad for him personally because he's you know been in the league for, I think this is now his third year, fourth year, third year, and he's showing – the reason why the Ravens put so much trust in him. Uh, nothing to be said at all about our receiver situation, drafting receivers, not drafting. Who cares? We have a guy who's making plays, let alone Rashad Bateman averaging 28 yards a catch. Insanity. Yeah, he's only got eight catches. We would all love to see him get more targets. We'd love to see DuVernay get more targets. You know what, though? That's not the type of offense we have. We have the type of offense that's going to find the matchup that we can exploit and exploit that matchup at the right time. I could be wrong. Maybe when we face the Bills and Bengals in the next two weeks, maybe our coaches won't be great at identifying those matchups. Maybe our players won't win enough of those advantageous matchups. But I think DuVernay and Bateman have shown us as fans they're capable of winning a whole hell of a lot more of these matchups in third down situations, the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Look at the big plays that Bateman has made. They've been one-on-one. -on -one. Xavion Howard. So I, I think we're in a great situation. DuVernay is bringing it every week. And the, the Patriots' contribution, we needed that contribution from him. The third down catch on our sixth drive to keep that drive going, we score a touchdown. The punt return after we stopped the Patriots on the next drive, for forty, the punt return for 43 yards, and then the touchdown to complete that seventh drive. In a concussion the week before. Incredible developments, if you ask me. Incredible contributions. Uh, Devin DuVernay, I think, is going a little, a little underappreciated, not really by Ravens fans, but nationally. I think if he was playing for the Cowboys or he was playing for the Rams or some of the other teams in the, quote, larger markets, because let's be honest, Baltimore's not a large market compared to those cities, obviously. If he was playing in some of the larger markets, I think he'd be a little bit more of a household name at this point. I'd be happy if he goes under the radar, returns three or four kickoff returns or punts for touchdowns this year, has eight, 10, 12, you know, passing receptions, and then we've got to go ahead and figure out a way to pay this man. Let me know what you think of my breakdown, some of these plays, my contention that there is film evidence of Devin DuVernay making these plays that he's currently making. 
from previous seasons. He just didn't get consistent opportunity, and now he is, and he's taking advantage of it, and it's to the Ravens' benefit. Appreciate you guys checking the video out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so now. Go share the video on social media if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content. Appreciate you guys' time.